so I am a visual artist. I make art. I'm an art maker. Um, so that's my point of reference. That's what I'm doing here. I'm not making art here other than standing here and speaking to you, I suppose might be art. Um, so I'm just going to make a few points and then I'm going to pass it off to my wife, Susan, who has something special planned for you. Culture is an intersection of cross-reference. You can have a culture of this making a cross-reference with a culture of that. The world is full of it. It's everywhere. Culture upon culture upon culture. Cross-reference upon cross-reference, etc., etc. Um, so sometimes you find yourself in parts of the world where what you think is relevant in terms of the culture is not actually what's going on, and you sort of swirl around and go, what is this? Um, so that's where the process of uh, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, and then application comes to play. The light of greater revelation is approaching. As we stand balanced in the potential of the spirit, our awareness of what has been and what is yet to be is illuminated. We are encouraged to focus and turn towards what we have yet to understand and away from what has held our attention in the past. That's, to me, part of what all of this is about today and tomorrow. It's, we are in, the, as John was saying, in the now. Everything is in the now. The past informs the present, which informs the future. But that present is the link between both the past and the future. Everything is now. The Lord is now. You are now. I am now. We're all here together now, along with the Spirit of the Lord. In my profession, I've been an art, a visual artist for over 50 years. So in my profession, there's always that question. Oh, art. Well, what is art? What is it? Somebody may say, it's this, it's that. They might want to challenge you about it. Whatever. So as I was thinking about that some years ago, I started to write down what that, well, maybe, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. So I made up a little list. So I'm going to read you the list. Art is the subjective expression of inventive inspiration. The opened door of imagination, the still water of perception, and a reflection of cultures. Art is a maker of time, a marker of times, a sign of places, a poetry of visual language. a key to understanding, a companion of wisdom and knowledge, a vision of beauty, the illustrator of dreams, the, enhance, <coughs> excuse me, the enhancement of visions, a means of rest, and a vehicle of healing. And I put an emphasis on a vehicle of healing. I've seen it happen through visual art. Art is space without time, a quantum equation of revelation, a labor of love, a resistance overcome, a highlight of skill, a unity of variety, a complement of science and technology, a passion of worship, and a measure of fun. 
even a mystery. Art is a human activity that allows for the inventive dynamic that God has established in his creation. And that's where we are. We're in his creation. And I would also add, Jesus is the art of God. Jesus is described as the expressed image. Jesus himself said, if you've, see, you've seen me, you've seen him. Maybe, can I remember it? <laughs> Here we go. Um, Jesus is the art of God. He's the artwork of God. He's an expressed image of God, the creator, the maker. He's in us, we're in him. So we have that creative, inventive dynamic that is there as well. It's passed on. It's like genetic. There's a genetic code in the spirit. I really believe that. Just like there what is in your physical being, there's one in your spiritual being. And that one in the spiritual being determines all kinds of factors and things about who you are in the spirit. What you have been given the ability to to do because all of us have the ability to do something and many of us have the ability to do multiple things I'm going to say one last thing as art makers we are challenged to expand or ex to open extend the realm of the spirit the spiritual dynamics that cross reference present and the future leave that there. I'm going to read um, a short piece from John Paul Jackson, which uh, impacted me years ago, and I still watch his invitation to the throne room over and over. I believe the arts, all of this is an invitation to the throne room, to Jesus, to everything. It's an invitation, and the invitation into the beautiful now. So this is an aspect, I feel this is an aspect, it's not all of it, but I'm gonna read this piece. All creative elements, all born from the same seed, the same heavenly interface called revelation. It allows us to take that which doesn't exist and put it into some form that does exist. So pictures and thoughts begin to combine and form some level of spontaneous outbursts that take shape in the form of sculpture, chord, progression, paintings, writing, dance, and so on. I want to read that because I'm going to do a short exercise and I'm going to need your help. I'm going to do an interactive piece with paintings and the prophetic and I'll demonstrate it and then my friends on the team and our dear friend Rob Mazza, they're going to come join me. And um, this is an interactive component, so we need you. So I invite you. I'm going to read to you a little bit about art and a few steps. Some of you may be very familiar with encountering the Lord in paintings. And I'm going to include dance and sound because when you watch a dancer, it's all vibration, color, sound, light, it's all vibration. So whatever I'm saying about a painting as a step, if you're watching a dancer and something catches your eye, you can apply these same steps. There, it's, it's, it's to everything. I just happen to be an artist. And so I'm speaking from paintings. Art is oftentimes apprehended intuitively in our spirit and understood in our imagination. Many times the Holy Spirit will grab people in their guts, whether they know him or not. 
I have painted, I'm, I'm a professional artist. I've painted in bars and tattoo parlors and you name it. And and stuff happens and I just love it. And I don't go, oh, I'm prophesying, I go, just saying. I'm in the South now. I'm a New Yorker in the South who so I go, just saying. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Um, a painting can act as a portal where a person has an opportunity to experience a sila moment, a sila moment, a space in time where perhaps through simply looking and engaging for a moment with what you see, the Holy Spirit can speak to you in ways that hearing other words cannot. It's a, I see art very much like dreaming. It's metaphors, enigmas, mysteries, color. And when you're standing in front of a painting, the Lord can talk to you in a way you might not hear him in some other form. So allow your thoughts to be still. And I'm gonna be putting up paintings, so we're gonna do this exercise. So you're looking at the work, allow your thoughts to be still, your eyes to shift focus between the combinations of colors, formations, layers. Maybe the image is representational. That might be saying something to you. Could be abstract, could be about the color. Listen and be expectant of seeing, feeling, and hearing something that's pulling you in. You may actually hate a color. You may actually have a visceral response. And I would go, Lord, I really hate that. Why? And the next thing you know, a whole, whole door flows it flings open um, because it's very much about you and him. Art is a unique language in a space where you can encounter and understand spiritual truths in a new way. As we are all unique, you will connect with art in a spiritual way. As Greg was saying, and it's a subjective response combined with the spiritual, which they're not separated. It's you and him. You can tap into deeper levels of inspiration, insight, creative thinking, and beauty as you reach out into that space. So consider asking questions of the Lord and conversing with him. Take note of what you're sensing in your spirit and let it play out in your imagination. Let it play out in your imagination. Allow yourself to daydream. Allow yourself to, as I always say, leave, because you might go somewhere. Try writing some of these things down, not in a journal, in a notebook. Right, Hill? <laughs> these things that you're hearing in response to what you're seeing, even if they seem random. I don't know if any of you remember Mad Libs and all those things where you fill in words, right? The Holy Spirit may sew them together as a word for you, or there could be a poem, song, or impromptu dance in the making, a business solution. How many business solutions have been drawn out on napkins? Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna just sort of demonstrate, and then I'm gonna pull up another one. The reason why I read the revelatory connection, and it's called art and the prophetic connection, because that's simply, simply the facet we're looking at today. Art is in itself beautiful, exciting, amazing, as in all of the arts. But what we're gonna look at here is what I would call the revelatory or prophetic connection. So I did this painting, I think it was in 2015, but I felt to start with it and I said, so Lord, obviously I know what I was thinking about then, sort of, but what if I was to be a person who never saw this, what would I see and what would you say? And my eye went right to her toes in the water. And he said, I want to bring balance to my people. They've been tossed upside down backwards to and fro. And I'm going to do it with grace and poise. I was just looking at her toes, her just standing, and so he spoke that. 
The other thing that can happen is I can ask someone what they're seeing and the Lord will actually continue and give me a word for that person. So we're going to do some of that. So who is the brave person? Not really brave because look at me, really? How brave do you have to be? <laughs> right? We like to have fun. Who would like to tell me something that they see? It doesn't have to be some big religious construct. Just what do you see? Is there something you like? A color, something. Somebody raise your hand, come up, whatever. I see freedom and joy. Okay, well, this is a bit of a problem for me because you came through the fire tunnel and I've got a little bit of intel already from putting my shoulder on you. So if you would just please stand up because now I'm gonna release it publicly. Um, you are truly a freedom breaker. You are a person that when you move, dance, enter the room, you break things off of people. It's the Holy Spirit just coming out of you and you love it. You love to see people free. You've been around for a while. You have done the work, but this is the part where it's out of the joy, out of the dance, out of the movement to bring that freedom. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up one last painting. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk to anyone. I would just like each of you to take a few minutes and look at it and have your conversations with the Lord.
was drawn out from your heart and you formed me. Father, we thank you that you have drawn us into your beauty. Lord, as we continue to give you permission and respond to your invitation. Take us places we have not dreamed of yet. Show us things that are beyond our imagining. 